Okay guys, something quick that I want to mention before the tutorial starts, you'll notice later on in the tutorial I used the following normal map to add some texture to the basketball, but I actually decided that this normal map over here was a lot more accurate. Now if you check the description, I've provided links to all of this stuff, so you can go ahead and use it, but I would recommend using this normal map uh, later on in the tutorial. Alright, so enjoy. Hi guys, alright, so in today's tutorial we will be creating LeBron James. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> in today's tutorial, we will be creating a basketball. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of cool tips and tricks for getting the overall shape of this basketball. And we'll also be going over some more advanced uh, material techniques. I'll show you how to use roughness and normal maps with Infusion 360 to have more control over your materials. And then at the end of this tutorial, we will 3D print this basketball and become the next NBA superstar. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding about the last part, obviously. But anyway, guys, this is going to be a fun and easy tutorial for Fusion 360 so I hope you guys have some fun with this. So without further ado let's get started. Alright guys so let's get started. I'm going to start off by creating a sphere. I'll select the bottom plane, select the origin and just increase the size of the sphere. We'll go to 100 millimeters for our basketball. Click on OK. Now the overall uh, design and shape of a basketball is going to be dependent on strategically placing uh, spheres and rectangles on our basketball to get that shape. And you'll see it's really simple to do. So let's get started. I'll go to Sketch, Rectangle, Two Point Rectangle. I'll select this as the plane. Now I'm going to zoom in here until you'll see that if we zoom out we can see these two big blocks. But if I zoom in again a little bit we can see it basically split up that single block into four smaller blocks. So I just want to be referencing these two blocks over here. And I'm going to basically just drag it down a little bit. And then I'm going to select this bottom edge. And I'm going to press the shortcut M for move and move this all the way down. Make sure it cuts right through the sphere. All right. And then I'm going to be selecting these two edges. So I'm holding shift to select more than one edge. Control C, Control V for duplicate and rotate this 90 degrees. And now I want to make sure that I'm moving this back up to the origin point. And it looks about fine. That's perfect. And then right click, click on OK. And we want to make sure we close the sketch off. So I'm going to basically use the line tool to join those two together. And the line tool here again to join that together. Now we've got a completed sketch. And then we're going to go to circle, center diameter circle, and I'm basically going to start right here on the edge of our sphere. And I'm going to drag this down, and now I have to determine exactly where I want this to stop. So let's see. Uh, over here should be fine. And then I right click, click on OK, and now I'm going to use the line tool. And just draw a simple line over here by uh, the origin, by this red line that you see, because we're going to be referencing that. And I'm going to go back to my sphere, select the sphere sketch, go to sketch, mirror, and then over here, mirror line is going to be that line. And it's basically going to mirror uh, this sketch to the other side. And I'll click on OK. And now I'm going to go to offset, and I'm basically going to try and match. Uh, this uh, the the width of this line over here. Now it's, it actually seems like it referenced the width, which happens to be one millimeter, which is perfect. But I want this to be minus one millimeter. And then click on OK. Do the same thing over here. Offset minus one millimeter. And that's our sketch, guys. We're actually done with that. So if I hide the bodies, we can see here's our sketch. So we want to make sure we select all of these pieces. Again, holding down shift to select multiple sketches. Okay, bring the bodies back. And then I'm going to right click, go to extrude. I'm going to put my direction on symmetric, drag this out. And if you guys can already see through the cut, we've got our shape of our basketball over there. So we want to make sure that operations on cut. We'll click on OK, and that's it, guys. We've created the shape of our basketball. It really is that simple. Uh, but we're not done over here. 
because if you look at this, these are all separate uh, bodies now. So, and you can see the inside is also just empty, it's hollow. So we need to fix that. So we're going to create another sphere. I'll select the bottom plane again, origin point again, and just drag this up. So it's making a cut right now. We want to make sure we put that on new body. And I'm just going to drag this up. Let's see. Till about there should be fine. All right, so if I go to shaded, you're gonna see that this is a little bit hard to see, right? Uh, we actually need to add some fillets to these edges just to make this a little bit more visible and aesthetically pleasing. So I'm gonna go back to shader with visible edges and we're gonna use a feature in here called a modify rule fillet. So a rule fillet's basically gonna apply a fillet to all of these edges at once. So it can actually save you quite a bit of time. So I'm holding down shift to select all of these bodies and let's apply a fillet. And you're going to see the reason why I made these lines quite thin is because by using this rule fillet, it's going to give us control over how much of this inside section we want to be visible. So I'm not going to apply too much fillet over here. Maybe 0 0.50 should be fine because I'm still trying to keep the lines fairly thin. I just think it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. I've seen some basketballs with a lot of visible space in the middle. And then over here, I know on a basketball this tends to be sharp, but I am going to apply a little bit of a fillet here. So I'll go for 0 0.20. And I'm holding down control to apply that fillet value to more than one edge. And again, this is looping all the way to the other side. So it's a good thing we didn't join this as one body so you can see it looped you've got that roundness on the other side and now we should be done with our shapes so I'll click on OK now if I go to shaded you'll see that it's way more visible just by adding those those simple fillets so again if you want the distance over here to be a little bit larger you'll just go back to the rule fillet and again we have the power of the timeline so I can literally just go there adjust that value and it's going to increase the size of that so we've created the basic shape of our basketball, but we're not done, guys. Still some more work to do. Uh, but now you've seen how to create a basketball, and it really is simple. So let's continue. All right, guys. So I just went in and, and applied a black texture to this inner sphere that we created. So I just went right-click, Appearance. I went to Other and Rubber. And there's a material here called Rubber Weathered. And it just has this nice weathered uh, texture to it that actually looks pretty nice in uh, the final renders. So I just apply that there. And then I'm actually going to go to, we can start defining the different materials here. So I'm going to go to plastic and I'm going to drag on, I think I'll drag on this paint enamel glossy for now. And we'll adjust this texture. So don't worry. I'll just drag it on all of these pieces. Right, so first of all, let's try and get the color closest to a basketball. So double click on this and I'm going to adjust the slider, bring it down a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure I adjust this roughness. So I'm going to bring that value up a lot. So the lower the roughness value, the more glossy this material is going to be. And by increasing this, you're basically reducing the gloss. Now I'm going to go into this material and I'm going to show you some stuff I haven't actually covered in any other Fusion uh, 360 tutorial. So if I go to Advanced, there's some pretty cool features you can play around with here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the roughness. I'm actually going to apply a map to this roughness. So if you check the description, I've, pl uh, I've supplied links to all of these images. So I'm just going to go to my desktop and... Where is it? There we go. So this is like a little bit of a, a dirt... Uh, dirt map and you can see when it's applied whenever it's capturing that lighting it kind of adds also like a weathered feel to this basketball so it actually makes it look pretty nice and then you can actually go into that roughness map and there's certain stuff you can adjust here so the brightness uh, so you can play around with all of these different settings to get all these different effects and you can play around sample size even the tiling the rotation of this map uh, but there's one more thing I want to add, and it's here by Relief Pattern, also known as Bump. Now, this supports Bump and Normal Maps. So, I'm going to just click here, go find the Normal Map. 
which is these little dots. And now when I apply that, it looks really, really bad, right? And the reason for this is because we actually want to click on, uh, we want to go into uh, the normal map and nearby advanced the dot to type, we want to change it from height map to normal map. So now it'll look a little bit more accurate. And then from here, you can just see that some this mapping over here really doesn't look that great. Uh, but honestly, I wouldn't be doing this stuff in Fusion 360. I'd rather do it in like Cinema 4D or another program. But I'm showing you how you can do this in Fusion 360. So I'm going to go uh, back. Uh, I'm going to click on Apply. Uh, and then I'll close that. Open that back up. And now you'll see we have some more settings here. So I'm actually going to decrease the scale quite a bit. So now we've got that roughness applied on top, which gives it that nice weathered feel, or like the basketball is being used. And then we've got the that like traditional basketball dotted pattern on here as well. All right, so that would be the texturing for this part completed. Now I'm going to be showing you uh, what else we can do to this basketball. All right, so let's continue. All right, so I'm actually looking at the like the overall distance of these lines so that I can see this black piece over here. I don't know if this is too thin, but again, we have the power of the timeline, so I can go back, here's the fillet, double click on that, and there we go, there's the value. So maybe put this on, let's say 95. Increase the size a little bit, uh, click on OK. And I feel like that looks a little bit better. Now, if you guys actually want to see what's going on here with this material, if we go to render, we can see it a lot better over here, right? Again, like I said, this mapping over here just looks really bad. Uh, and like I said, I can fix stuff like this in other programs. Uh, but I am showing you how to do it in Fusion 360. So if you're doing this, maybe you'd have to find like a really strategic way to uh, angle this basketball. But again, we can see all of that weather textured from that roughness map. Uh, we've got our normal map here with all of these dots on it. Starting to look like a basketball now. Uh, well, it does look like a basketball, uh, but we're not done. We're going to add some sponsor text. So Spalding will add on the side here. And I'm going to do that. I'm not going to use, I usually go to decal and just apply a decal there, but I'm going to be showing you how we can insert SVG. Again, check the description. I supplied links to all of the stuff. Uh, but the SVG is going to allow me to cut into this material and actually add depth uh, to that uh, logo. And it's going to look really nice. All right, so let's continue. All right, guys. So we're going to use insert SVG to get some sponsorship uh, logos here on the basketball. And now you guys can do whatever you want. I actually have a video on inserting SVGs in the Fusion 360. Uh, which shows you how to use Illustrator uh, to basically convert vector, f uh, vector files to SVG and then you can use that in Fusion 360. So I'm going to go to Insert, Insert SVG. I'm going to select, uh, let's see, I'm going to select this plane and then I'll go to the folder icon and I'll go and find Spalding logo.svg. Import that in. All right, it's on the other side of here. And just navigate this. Now, this is really important, guys. Whatever size you have this at right now is going to determine how big uh, this logo is actually going to be on our uh, basketball. So just make sure that you're happy with the overall size and placement of this. So let's see, Spalding. I think on basketballs, it's a little bit bigger, right? I'm looking at a basketball right now. Um, okay, so that should be fine. Insert that there. Click on OK. Right, so if I hide this, you'll see that this SVG is actually a sketch. So I can select all of these different pieces. Oh, what on earth? Okay, so it seems that this is not a closed sketch. So I'm going to have to just uh, try and figure that out quickly. If you guys are encountering the same problem, um, let me just try and figure out why this is not a closed sketch and then let me get back to you guys. All right, so problem fixed, guys. Uh, the reason why this is not closed is, I don't know, for some reason, these arches are causing problems with the sketch. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go to sketch, trim, and trim away all these curved pieces and we're going to draw them back in. Uh, it's going to be really simple, though. I'm going to go to line and um, to basically create an arch like this. You'll see there's an arch. 
uh, I'm basically holding down the left mouse button so when I select this point I'm holding down the left mouse button and it's automatically creating that arch for me so you can see over there so I select this point so I click to select the point and then I hold down the left mouse button and it creates that arch so I'm just going to do that for all of these pieces just to close them off and then you'll see that uh, it's actually going to fix the problem so there we go now the sketch is actually closed so for some reason I don't know why that happened uh, but that's now closed so we can go ahead and select all of these pieces holding down shift to select multiple sketches and then we can continue from here alright so my technique for this is uh, I'm going to open up the bodies uh, actually I should have selected this first before I selected all of those sketches but I'm basically going to this piece that we have over here, body 4, I'm going to duplicate this, so control C, control V, and then I'm going to hide body 4, I hide all the bodies just so I can get to my sketch, and then, oops, select all of this again, unhide the bodies, hide body 4, now I'm basically going to go right click, extrude, I'm going to extrude this out a little bit, actually quite a bit and then I'm going to make sure let's see yeah, just extrude this out quite a bit you want to make this really thick because you want this to cut right through this piece but we want to put this on new body first so I can see my last body here is body 11 so all of these new pieces will be created after body 11 so new body click OK right so all of these pieces is our logo and then I'm shortcut M for move move this out uh, now I am missing that there was like a trademark logo here by the Spalding logo but uh, that's not a big deal I'm just showing you guys the technique for this and then I'm gonna move this forward over here click OK I'm gonna go back select all of these planes okay got all those pieces selected and now let's see where's the placement let me snap to the front okay so this is actually a lot further down than I expected so I'm gonna press shortcut actually hold on this is way too far down it might cause some problems so select all those bodies shortcut M for move and let's just move this up a bit until about there should be fine Okay, click OK. Now go back, select all of those faces again. And do the same process. We're going to right click, go to extrude, and we're going to make sure this actually intersects with this shape. But we want to hide this black sphere at the back. So it's body 10. Because if that's not hidden, this is basically going to cut into that as well. And that's not what we want to happen because you'll see why. Uh, so let's cut this all the way into the sphere but okay, let me see actually let me see the cut process first if I'm getting the shape that I really want yeah that, that's actually fine right so just cut into that shape and make it fairly deep click OK and then these pieces over here I'm just gonna hide them so I can see what's going on here uh, show hide and then if I unhide body 10 you'll see the reason why we cut into that is because now we've got this black piece visible over here and it's adding that nice uh, material to that as well while this is still part of this object uh, because I didn't also, I also didn't want all of these in the scene so I'm actually going to remove that now but yeah that's what I did guys and remember that material has that nice roughness or weathered uh, texture applied to it and again the reason for using SVG you can see I'm encountering some navigation problems if ever you have these navigation problems just go to look at and choose what you want to look at so I want to look at this piece 
and then I'll just zoom out and then I can navigate around freely again so that's just a, a workaround if you encounter some navigation problems but yeah again the reason for using SVG is because unlike a decal which is just flat uh, by cutting into this object we've now got depth and it looks really nice so yeah so I'm gonna do the same for that side but I don't need this anymore right so I can select all of these bodies right click go to remove I can select this piece hide it uh, and body 4 we don't need body 4 anymore right so we can remove that now this piece I want to duplicate it onto that side right so body 11 go to create mirror mirror plane we'll reference this plane over here it's gonna mirror it to the other side but you're gonna notice that the text is facing the wrong way so in order to fix that we select this piece go to create mirror mirror plane and we select this plane and it should fix the orientation so now I can remove this body and there we go so we've got Spalding on both sides facing the correct way and we use SVG to cut into the object to give it some depth and it actually looks really nice so now I'm going to do the same for the NBA logo down here on this side so I've showed you guys the technique so I'm just going to skip forward and apply that NBA logo and then uh, you guys are free to do whatever you want with this put your own logos on here and then we should be done all right oh well, yeah one more thing that I'm actually going to do so when I apply maybe some more logos here is I'm actually going to apply a rule fillet to this section where this is cut out right so select that modify rule fillet and put like a really small amount uh, so let's see does how much can we put here zero I think zero point zero zero point one zero so just like a really small amount and I'll do the same to the other side and the reason for doing that is if I go back to the render is uh, it applied a little bit of a fillet to those edges so it just captures some lighting information uh, a little bit better so I'm gonna do that to this side as well and for the rest of the logos that I plan on putting on here all right all right guys so I've gone ahead added that NBA logo and I I apply a little bit of a rule fillet again just to make those edges pop you'll see if I go to render here we go NBA and the Spalding logo as well there's one thing we forgot and uh, that's actually add that air pump there needs to be a uh, air pump over here on our basketball so what I want to do is I'm going to go to uh, let's see I go to sketch project and project and what I'm going to basically do is project uh, the sphere onto a flat sketch you'll see what I mean so select that plane and I want my pump to be over here so I'm just going to select the shape so now if I hide this you'll see that uh, it actually projected the shape over here but uh, we didn't get that curve so what I'm gonna have to do is it's fine I just I need to be able to just sketch at that angle so hmm that should be fine I will just move it up and adjust it from there uh, I actually thought it was actually going to project this curveness as well but it didn't do that uh, but again we can still continue from here and then what I'm gonna do is uh, construct a plane at an angle then I'll select that line and you can see that the plane is at that angle and then I'm going to click on OK and I'll select a center diameter circle you select this plane and now let's see I want my we'll put the pump over here let me see that should be fine uh, let me just hide that body and then just extrude this up Unhide the body, extrude that up, make this a new body, and just move it up now. So yeah, again, you can see the reason why I did that is because I actually I just wanted it to be at this angle really quickly, but you can see we're still gonna have to do some adjusting here. Yes, so two, uh, two. Use this to move this down freely, so we're not constrained to these accesses, to the axis. 
and then let's see from here I can just continue modifying this um, I'm just going to reference a pump quickly right so I'm going to go to offset select this face and just offset this in so we can make that hole for the pump and then I'm going to hide this body just in case I don't want to really cut into that and then I'm going to cut this into this piece so cut down alright and now you can see there's a little bit of a problem there in order to fix that I'm going to offset this plane at this face again bring this in till about there select this piece that small section and extrude this down but I want to make sure that this is a new body and now you can see it's fine okay and I can get rid of this body extra body that was created here earlier quickly uh, bring back that underlying black piece and then I'm going to apply a fillet to these edges and a fillet over there as well and then all I have to do is just go to appearance and apply that rubber material on there and we've got an air pump close and there we go we've got our air pump so we've got our basketball the air pump and everything so if we go to render now I'll just hide that sketch in those construction planes and there we go guys we've created a basketball completely from scratch uh, within Fusion 360 we applied the material I showed you the SVG and yeah it was really simple to create actually guys so there we go now you've created a basketball maybe go ahead 3d print this turn it into a real basketball and then uh, become an NBA superstar and become the next LeBron James <laughs> alright but anyway guys I hope you learned something useful from this I'll show you the technique for creating a basketball and some other smaller techniques that hopefully uh, you find useful. Uh, it was really simple to create. And as always, thank you for watching my tutorials and stay tuned for some more. All right, goodbye.